Hey, I am Faligan, a professional digital sculptor, and in this video we will be going over all of the tools and features, as well as some nice tips for ZBrush Core Mini, Pixelogic's completely free digital sculpting program. If you are new to the world of digital sculpting, or maybe you are looking to pick up some nice tips, then you are in the right place. I've been using ZBrush for many years, I'm a part of their beta testing team, and not a single day goes by where I don't really open up and use ZBrush. Click that subscribe button if you are new around here, and if you are interested in furthering your education after this video, then be sure to check out the link in the description for the continuation of this tutorial, where I go through the steps to sculpt a male head from beginning to end. The ZBrush Core Mini interface has been pared down quite nicely compared to the full ZBrush software, but that doesn't mean that it's not a little intimidating. When first opening the software, you will be greeted with a sphere on screen, and with your mouse or pressure-sensitive pen, if you have one of those, you can immediately begin sculpting. All you have to do is simply click and drag on your sphere. Pretty simple, right? And if you click off your sphere, you can rotate around in 3D space. I personally recommend using right-click for this. I have one of the buttons on my pen customized to do exactly that. The reason for this is so that you can rotate the object even when you have your cursor over top of your 3D model. Before we continue further, I am going to unlock my rotation from the Y axis by clicking this button up here. Now, if you are new to rotating around in a 3D space, this might be a little tough to get used to, but it's what I've been using for years, so it's much more natural for me. So right click is rotate. Now that we have that unlocked, that's much nicer. While doing that, if we hold the shift key, we can snap to an axis of our choice. The head in the top right corner indicates which way we are looking at our mesh from. That can be handy from time to time if you get a little lost and confused. Holding the Alt key before right-clicking will let us pan the object around. And then we can zoom in by doing that exact same operation, but once we Alt plus right-click, we will let go of the Alt key. And then by continuing to move the mouse, we can zoom in and out. That one is a little tough to get used to if you are new here, so if you ever forget these shortcuts, you can use these buttons over on the right side of the screen to do all of these movement operations. So now that we know how to navigate within ZBrush Core Mini, we can take some time to look at a few other fun things here. We'll start at the top of the screen with this button, which is our symmetry toggle. It's on by default, and you can simply click that to turn it off or back on. The shortcut for that is the X key on your keyboard, but most likely this is not something you'll be toggling on and off all that frequently. Next up, we have these two sliders here, draw size and Z intensity. They do exactly what they might sound like. The draw size will change the size of your brush and the Z intensity will change the strength of your brush. One thing to keep in mind when doing this is that when you change brushes, and we will look at all of these here shortly, your draw size stays the same no matter what brush you select, but your Z intensity is independently unique for each and every brush. And then a couple fun hotkeys here for you. The S key on your keyboard will pull up the draw size slider. You'll use this one more than any other hotkey. And U will pull up the Z intensity slider. There are a couple buttons up at the top in the left corner for saving and opening files. You can save your files as images with 3D data so that you can display your images online and have other users download them and import them into ZBrush Core Mini. You also have some project starting points here that you can use to start from a block of stone or the traditional sphere. Keep in mind that once you select one of these, there is no going back. So make sure you save before starting a new project. Speaking of going back, Control Z on your keyboard is undo and Control Shift Z is redo. And then you can hold those key combinations to step through those very quickly if need be. Okay, let's get to some fun stuff next by taking a look at all of the brushes available here. We have eight unique brushes in ZBrush Core Mini. You are already familiar with the standard brush, as that is what we've been using up until now. But the brush that we are going to be using more than anything else will be this one right here, the Move Brush. This will allow you to push and pull on your sculpt to focus on making large changes. Right next to that is the Snake Hook Brush. At a larger brush size, this will work similarly to a Move Brush, but when decreased in size, you will be able to use this brush to pull out tubes of geometry. The second most used brush that you'll be playing around with is going to be the clay buildup brush. This is like a standard brush in some ways, but a bit more unique. 
you'll immediately notice the different texture the brush gives us, as well as the fact that we can continue to build up or carve into our surface infinitely. And of course, you can carve into the surface by just simply holding the Alt key. As a nice tip, because this brush is a little difficult to control, I recommend lowering the Z intensity to about 10. This would also be a nice time to mention that if you hold the Shift key, it will activate your Smooth Brush, which you can use to smooth your geometry surface. While smoothing, if you let go of the Shift key, you'll get a nice relaxing of the polygons. And if you'd like to see those polygons more closely, you can press Shift F on your keyboard to activate polyframe mode. Additionally, that button is over here on the side with a couple extra buttons up top that you can use to customize your polyframe data. There are four more brushes that we are going to look at really quick. Next being the pinch brush, which does exactly what it sounds like. This is a great brush for defining plane changes early on in a sculpture. Paired with that, the H polish brush is very good at creating flat surfaces, also very good for blocking out forms. And then for the last two, we have the inflate brush, which almost looks like a standard brush upon first use, but it will continue to balloon out around your cursor. And then finally, the Slash 3 brush, which is great at carving into your surface. Here we have a way to change the color of your sculpture, and then below that we have some materials. I recommend using the basic material, as that gives us the best information in terms of light and shadow out of the provided materials here. If you'd like to share a screenshot of your work later on, you can of course change that to something else to display your sculpture. Now that you know the tools here in ZBrush Core Mini, if you would like to go a little more in depth, you can check out the next tutorial where we go through a small project using the tools that we just discussed to sculpt the head. If that sounds like something of interest to you, click the link in the description to my Gumroad where you can download the tutorial. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. You have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.